Well, uh, one of my first foster kids that I later adopted came to me when she was four years old. And when she came to me, she came with a plastic trash bag. And in that trash bag was all kinds of sizes. She was four years old, but she had size 16, women small, all kinds of, it looked like they just took a bunch of clothes and threw it in the sack. So I vowed from that time on that no child in my care would leave like that. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Because Adulting is Hard podcast. I'm Alita and I've got my friends here from Kids Harbor this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Angie Colbert. I am the administrator at Kids Harbor. Sharon Beard, I'm the business manager for Kids Harbor. We've been connected to Kids Harbor in several different ways. I think it's a great ministry program and I'm so excited to have you all on the show today. Angie, tell me a little bit about how this program got started. Well, I had been a foster parent for approximately 20 years and I wanted to help more children, but not necessarily in my home because yeah. I'm limited there. So I got with my dad who was a minister of a church in Angleton and we located Kids Harbor in Liverpool. Okay, so um, your father was a minister, correct? Yes. So talk to me a little bit about that. Well, after we were open for about a year and my dad got cancer, passed away suddenly uh, and unexpected. So I just kept running with it because it was my mission and my heart's desire to help kids and it was also his. And so we just kept going. So Sharon, talk to me a little bit about the program. Y'all's program is a little bit different than programs. I've worked in residential treatment before. I've, I've been in residential treatment before. Um, that's kind of what we call this type group home facility. Talk to me a little bit about what makes this program different. Let's start with what type of kids you serve and then let's move into what their daily schedule kind of looks like, the structure of the things that they do. Okay, well, we run several programs, but our main thing that we started with was an emergency shelter. and. This is the point of contact that most children come into CPS. Uh, they're removed from their homes for abuse or neglect. And most of the time it's on a weekend or after hours, they need a place to put them quickly and may not have time to seek out a foster home. So they come to a shelter. It's a temporary stay. The state wants them in a more secure foster home. They can stay with us for up to 90 days. And we have a, a large facility. We take all ages. So we are known throughout the CPS world as we can take sibling groups. And that's really our heart because we want to keep the siblings together. And that's important for them because they're already removed from home. And now they get to come someplace with their siblings and not have to be separated. So we have the shelter. And after we've been running the shelter for a few years, CPS talked to us and said, hey, you've got a lot of room here. Why about opening up a group home where some of the kids could stay longer? And uh, we did that. And so kids that are, they're having a hard time finding a foster home, or sometimes the kids just don't want to go into one. If they want to stay at Kids Harbor and we have a bed, they can just transition into our group home. After we had ran that for a few years, uh, we thought about all these kids that are turning 18, want to get out on their own. So we opened up a supervised independent living for uh, boys and our young adults, as we call them, and they transition into that. So we've had uh, residents that have lived with us through the shelter, the group home, uh, got their diploma because they have to have a high school diploma to go in that program. It's kind of an incentive and then they move into that. And that, that's been really um, a good thing because it gives us longevity with the children. We can, it's like we're their family. Uh, a lot of the kids call her Mama Angie or they call me Mama. And I want them to feel that way when they've lived with us that long. And that's kind of what makes this program so different to me and, and why why it's it's the a program that I continuously come back to is that I don't think that people, a lot of times people understand what it looks like to be taken out of your home. So give me a little bit of how children arrive to you. What does that look like in their physical state? And then we're gonna talk about how we meet their physical needs and their emotional needs kind of in one thing. Well, many times they come to us with a lot of physical needs because of neglect. Uh, unfortunately, there's a large uh, drug issue in our state and a lot of parents are addicted to drugs and it, it causes neglect to the children. Not that they don't love their children, they just don't have the resource themselves to take care of them. So we've gotten kids that were full of scabies, lice, 
malnourished. Um, we have abuse cases where children were harmed. And so our immediate thing is let's get them in and get them all cleaned up and start giving them healthy meals and uh, a structured day. And a few weeks later, you can't tell the difference in them. They've, they've just come a long way. And uh, one of my staff one time, I, it really stuck with me. We had a girl come in and she had uh, a lot of issues physically, a small girl. And the staff was like, I can't wait to get her all cleaned up and feed her and watch her. And in a few weeks, see a whole different skin color and all that. And she and and I know that that's what they want to do. And it made me really happy to hear that. So that's one of the things that's so unique about this facility. It's actually located between Alvin and Angleton. Um, we're not going to give you the exact location because it is a protected facility. We don't want everybody to know where it is all the time. Um, so the staff that you have, they, they're they committed to staying there. Talk to me a little bit about that for a long time. I mean, y'all have longevity in your staff. Talk to me about that. We do. We have, uh, like Angie said, we opened our doors in 2003. I still have the very first employee that we ever hired. She is still there. And uh, I have a core group of people that have been with me for 10, 15 years. And it does mean, make a difference. First of all, they get more knowledgeable about the job. They get more experienced and the children that age out and maybe come back, they see them there and that's a part of their childhood and it's somebody they can reconnect with. And sometimes they have questions about things they did there and, and they need them to fill in the gaps. So that's been really good. The stability of a program like this is so, it's it's what, make, what sets y'all apart. Not only are you bringing you're specializing bringing children with families, like units together, but but keeping them together and loving them through the system is a huge thing. So when the what what can you expect for a day? Like let's talk. We're we're going to talk about your emergency shelter. What can you expect? To, what does a day look like for the kids there when they're there? Uh, well, after they've had all their medical, their dental, and their psychological, and Angie's got all that completed, uh, we put them in school. Of course, we want their school to get. Uh, get them right into many times they're behind. So they get up in the morning, they uh, get ready for school, they make their bed and clean their room hopefully, and then they go to school. And then at the end of the school day, the bus brings them straight to the harbor. We have a little bus stop there, they get off, they go to snack, they come back, they have some free time, but they start their showers because we have a lot of kids. So we have to start showers. Then they uh, do homework, they have supper, we give them a chore to do every day just because we want them to learn that. So they have to do their chore, then they get another snack, and then they do the bedtime. So so very, very structured. Very A lot of these kids have not had that kind of structure, so they thrive in a structured environment. Um, so now that we've heard a little bit about the, the program itself, some of the things, some of the guiding philosophies that you have um, may seem odd to people, but for someone who's been through the system, it, it's very important to me. When kids arrive, they typically don't have a lot of things. And if they do, they just have what they brought with them. So when they leave, talk to me about y'all's program, about making sure that every kid has a bag that they leave with. Well, uh, one of my first foster kids that I later adopted came to me when she was four years old. And when she came to me, she came with a plastic trash bag. And in that trash bag was all kinds of sizes. She was four years old, but she had size 16, women small, all kinds of, it looked like they just took a bunch of clothes and threw it in the sack. So I vowed from that time on that no child in my care would leave like that. I mean, because I, I mean, I, I, I know that sounds like a an, uh, an inhumane thing to say, but as we've been talking about homeless is, homelessness and we've been talking about children in need, that is a thing, y'all. Kids come in with their things in a trash bag. And sometimes when the facility is not like this facility, they leave like that. They leave with their items in a bag. Hey, welcome. Have a great life. We love you. Send out your stuff in a trash bag. So the fact that y'all collect and gather to make sure that they have, you also send them away with a, a little book maybe or, or something and a picture, correct? We try to have that for all the children. Uh, we want them to have something that while they were at Kids Harbor, they either made, uh, Right now, I have a Girl Scout group working on a memory book for them. That's real important. We've done that many times there where we make a little memory book for them, and then they get to take it with them. So I'm excited about that coming up. Uh, I just want them to feel like that they can remember this part of their childhood. 
And like we all know, the first three years are so important. So when we get a child in that's under the age of three and they get their regular food and they get their regular sleep and and you can watch them how well they do with all that, we know that at least for that part of time in their life that they got what they needed, plenty of hugging. Believe me, if there's a baby in the facility, that baby is hugged on and carried around and petted. And we have a toddler room that's always full we always have two and three year olds and uh, they get a lot of attention because they're, you know, our babies. And so when they leave us, they look like we want them to look like they were at a place where they were well cared for. So their clothes are going to be clean. They're going to be the right size. They're going to be in a suitcase or a duffel bag. And I get a lot of those donated, but I need them because we, we have four or more, four or more hundred children every year that come in and out. So I need like four or five hundred. That's a lot of kids. It's a lot of kids. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't get too many of that. I can't get too many suitcases. People have helped me and we've had drives and all that, but it's an ongoing need that I have to keep putting out there in front of the public so that I can get enough suitcases. We and don't care if they're used. We don't care if they're gently used to have a, you know, something not perfect on it. Just you're getting a new suitcase. Give me your old one. So what do the holidays look like at the kids har- at Kids Harbor? Well, we celebrate every holiday. Uh, in fact, last night they went to a haunted house because it's Halloween, you know, so we're decorated and all that. So coming up is Thanksgiving and due to the generosity of a, a restaurant in Alvin, he invites us there every year for a big Thanksgiving feast. So we dress our kids up and we go have a Thanksgiving dinner there. And then Christmas is a production. It's a production. So we get each child sponsored and the, uh, person who sponsored them sends the gifts to us. We make sure that they're wrapped and inventoried so I can make sure every kid has the same amount. They do get a big, huge bag, but it's not a trash bag. It's a big clear plastic bag so they can see their gifts in it. And then we unwrap all at the same time. And uh, there are children that uh, have asked to come back to us at Christmas time because they know that we're going to get plenty of community involvement and support and they're going to get Unless they ask me for a laptop or a cell phone, they pretty much get what they want for Christmas. And so then Angie will make sure they we go to another restaurant in Angleton. They do a big, nice Christmas dinner. And then after that, she usually takes them to the movies that night, like a lot of families we do. do. Yep. And uh, they get Jack in the Box because that's really the only, the only thing, thing open. open. <laughs> so I mean, we try... This is this is probably not a very nice thing to say, but that the white privilege thing that we talk about all the time that, that people don't have any realm of this is reality for some of these kids. They've never actually had a sit down dinner for for Thanksgiving. They've never received gifts that belong to them. Not be, sometimes, like you said, not because their parents didn't want to, but just because they didn't have the means. So being able to foster that love and fa- what you're doing is you're is you're showing them what the other side mm-hmm. looks like. That that if I work and I work real hard and I do these things and I keep myself healthy and I and I follow the things and I let other people love me, that this is what family time and love looks like from from other people. So there are specific things that we talked about that y'all need for this program. One of the things is the need for suitcases. Talk to me a little bit about that or duffel bags. Yeah, a big oversized duffel bag or a suitcase. Uh, There's been many, many times that children leave us and fly out because uh, they may have come from a different part of the state or they're flying to maybe a relative or somewhere. And so we need suitcases definitely for that. But all in all, we want the children to leave with a bag and they are so excited to get a suitcase like that. They'll say, is it mine? Can I keep it? I'm like, yes, this is yours. Put your name on it. This, wherever you go, this is your bag. And so I think it's just real important. And like I said, we, we've had drives. Many people have helped me, but I just need that ongoing thing. And for those people that aren't familiar with this, you literally just got off the phone with a CPS worker that said, please don't send them with their stuff in a trash bag. Right? Yes, yes we did. That, uh-huh. that, was a, that was the conversation. So that may, not, they may, that may not resonate with some of my listeners, but I mean, some places, the means that they have is they let the kids leave with all of their belongings in a trash bag and their children. So we really don't want that. So we are going to help y'all do a drive for duffel bags that can be gently used, you said. Yes. I mean, yes, y'all, we don't, want, we don't want your broken ones. I mean, again, you're giving it to a child to have it. But there's also another need as far as you said you needed pillows. Talk to me about, you have 400 kids that come through. So talk to me about why pillows. 
Yes, we uh, we need pillows because when a kid comes, we have a hygiene box full of toothpaste and toothbrush and things like that. We they each get a pillow, and when they leave us, they take that pillow with them. They take their hygiene box and their pillow because those are things you don't want to reuse, you know. And so we want to make sure that, and they usually have a, a, a special pillowcase because I've had a lot of groups de- give me pillowcases that were kid friendly and looked nice. And so they like to take their little pillow and we don't want to reuse the pillows. So we let them take them. And you're talking about, again, I've had people help me, but it's an ongoing this need. This is a continuous and ongoing need. Continuous and ongoing need. Um, so... So you usually do a gala, because I've been to the gala. It's one of my favorite things. I was been since the first one that y'all did. And, and so that is not happening this year. So you've created an Amazon list, correct? Tell me yes. I know, tell me how you decide, because it, it was a great story. You were just telling me about how items land on that list. Tell me about that list. Uh, well, we use the list for our needs and wants. Some of the things are just purely things we just want for the facility. And uh, a staff will come and tell me, hey, we need this, uh, we need Xbox controllers, or we need batteries. And so I'll put it on the Amazon wish list. And then if it doesn't get picked up, then I'll purchase it. But hopefully, uh, a lot of people will say, where's your list? What do you like? And we have a link on our website for that. And I update the list frequently. Um, and we can put the link, you know, where you are so you can uh, click on the list. Yeah, we'll click all that stuff on here to make sure that you have um all of the information for this program. I am so proud of you two ladies. I know that this is a really hard thing to ask y'all to do, but you have done great. And and the fact that you're serving children every single day, um, it's that servant leadership that we talk about all the time, that looking past self and saying that these children, you you are laying this the groundwork, the stepping stones for some of these children that they haven't had in other type parts of their life. Is there anything else that you'd like to, to add in on here? Well, we really appreciate the community involvement. Without that, it would be very hard to run Kids Harbor the way we want to. I could give them food and I could make sure they had a place to stay. And I, I you know, we, we do get funded from the state for a part of that. So it's just the extra stuff and the way we want it to look and the way we want it to feel while they're there. I uh, was over here in a conversation with a sibling group that just came to us last week. And the mom was like, how do you like your place? They were having a phone visit. She said, mom, there's a chandelier in the hallway. Mom, there's a lighted unicorn in the hallway. And our our room is dressed like Paris. We feel like we're in Paris, France. And so mom was like, well, I'm glad y'all are happy and you like it. She said, it's beautiful here. I, I love my room. And that made me feel good because if they weren't in a place that they felt that, that would, you know, this way, they got to tell their mom they were happy and she felt better. And we want the parents to feel better so they will get help and do what they need to do, do their services. But it made me feel good that the kids were excited to be there. And and those stories, you can't make those up. You're on the front lines of what, what is impacting children in need and, and, and their families as a whole. And I am so grateful for the both of you. And I appreciate you so much coming on the show. Remember, y'all, that we will connect you to all the links to them so that we can have a drive for them because I really want to support y'all as you need help. And um, remember to live happier because adulting is hard. And we'll see you next time.